get excited or if they sit cold in the pew and say, this is real. Uh -uh. If it's not truth, if it's not the secret place, they're not abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. Unless the Lord build the house, the builders build in vain. Am I telling any truth here? Yeah. Yes. He's got to bring us back together in one accord. And to do that, He must strip us of what we have in our belief system that we think is right. That's not according to God's Word. Y'all see what I'm saying? So He can put us where? In that secret place. The early church was abiding in the secret place. They were in the secret place. There, That was their dwelling. That was their habitation. That was their home. They lived there. Do we live there? Is our passion for Him? Do we desire to live there? Or do our actions say that we desire to live in the flesh? Let me keep on going. Whew. Ain't I for the Holy Ghost. Whew. Verse 4. And He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. With this, go with me to Matthew chapter 7. Wow, it's heating up now. Keep your marker there. We're coming back to Psalm 91. Matthew chapter 7. Go with me to verse 12. Because we need to study what the secret place really is. Some, some people get into mysticism and say, well, it's a secret place in my mind. I, I go up there like the monks up on a hill and get up on that mountain and I get in a certain position, which I'm not going to get into because I might not be able to get back up and start humming. I'm going to get in the secret place. Home. Home. <laughs> that ain't the secret place, y'all. <laughs> but there are other people, even in Christendom, that try to do that with the Hindu beliefs mixed into Christianity. You see people doing yoga in the church. Oh, yeah. They'll bring it right on in. Let's just bring it right on in and let's hum like the rest of them. We're going to get in the secret place. It's called soaking. Let's just sit here and soak in the secret place. And all they're doing is opening themselves up to demon spirits. There's nothing in the Word of God that tells you to sit there in yoga and hum and moan and try to get in some type of weird spiritual place. Mm -mm. That's not the secret place. Watch what Jesus talks about right here. Verse 12, Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that man should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Wait a minute. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Man, that, that's a spiritual truth. How many times do we break this spiritual truth, yet we get up in our closet and go, home, home, and we're treating somebody horrible on the outside, but we're still going, home, I'm praying, I'm in the prayer closet, I'm in the secret place, and yet we don't follow the Word right here. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In order to stay in that secret place and have that peace, praise God, Isaiah 26, 3, I keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. Who's me? Well, the Word of God. Do we apply the Word of God and we treat people how we'd like to be treated? Think about it. I've had to apply this to my own self. Believe me, I stepped on my own toes several times with, with this one. Because I had to treat someone, okay. Well, Lord, you know they don't like me anyway. Why should I treat them any, you know, any better? Well, how would you like to treat them, Daryl? That's common sense, isn't it? But we act up sometimes and we walk in the flesh, religious flesh, and say, well, I'm quoting scriptures and, and I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take a scripture out and just wham them with it and take the sword and wear them out with it. Well, if you were in that place, would you desire to be wore out with a sword? Or would you, would you desire to have a gentle hand try to restore you? Because it says in the, in the Word of God that if you see your brother stumble, you try to gently Bring him back to the faith. <laughs> it didn't say cut his ears off. <laughs> I have been guilty of taking that sword and cutting ears off. You see what I'm saying? Many times we do that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Do unto others. What about business trade? I mean, business habits. You know, you, you perform a, a transaction in the physical because we're supposed to be, I mean, without blame before all men, even the unbelievers, the Word of God says. Have good rapport with them. Do we do our business transactions that way? Do we pay our bills? Because if you claim to be a Christian, there's people watching you, and even the bill collectors are watching you because they want to get their money. Think about this, y'all. we got to do unto others as we have them do unto us. Do you want to be paid back? <laughs> Amen. Then verse 13, let me keep on going. Enter ye 
you in at, you enter you in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life. And few there be that find it. This is that gate that says, I've got faith in Christ, but I will not live for Christ. I'm going to continue to cuss everybody out, walk in the flesh, drink all I want to drink, do what I want to do, gamble all I want to gamble, act like I want to act, and yet I am saved. I am a Christian. I am a believer. I'm in the secret place. That's a lie. You have deceived yourself. Only God can tell you if you're saved in that action. But I'm going to tell you something. You're deceiving yourself. You cannot live in adultery and fornication. You cannot live in unforgiveness and bitterness and call yourself in the secret place and be abiding in the shadow of the Most High and have His protection. Many people say, why are things not working out in my life? Why is everything falling apart? Sometimes we need to evaluate where we're dwelling. Where's your dwelling? Where's your habitation? Where are you living at? If you're living in sin... That's not the secret place. He's giving you the power to come out. You say, well, Daryl, those things aren't sins. Let me tell you, you know in your own heart and by reading the Word of God what sin is. And you know by the Holy Ghost, I don't have to point out Pacific to everybody's sin. We know. We know, we know, we know. And God knows that we know. That's the thing. Let me tell you, Jesus is telling us here, if you apply my Word to your life, Straight, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life. Amen. And few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns and thieves and thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. My goodness, that means that we must make a little proper discernment of not only who we listen to from the pulpit, but also who we gather around ourselves. We're supposed to come out and be ye separate because some people are around others that bring them back into sin and they love to have it so. And they're dwelling around the wrong people. And you know them by their fruits. By their fruits. By some of the fruits I just mentioned a while ago. Not that you're supposed to be mean or unloving, but you're supposed to come out and be separate from that.